My name is Nello D'Andrea. I work at the oldest insurance company in Switzerland, Dimobiliar, as a developer. And my colleague and myself blog about uh, Microsoft 365 and SPFX topics uh, on our blog. So uh, today I will talk about my experience of grading the React Security Grid web part. The first part is uh, more about the grade process, and then I will show also the, the React Security Grid web part, what it can. And I think it's, it's, great, it's a great uh, SPFX solution. So at uh, my company, we are responsible about 100 uh, own developed uh, SPFX solution. And uh, the upgrade process is part of our uh, regular maintenance process. I will also share our insight and some of our tips and tricks. So this is the agenda. Why should we upgrade the SPFX solution? What tooling do we have? How is the report built? And then uh, what to do when the package upgrade fails? And some tips from, from us and then the React Security web part and some uh, demo. So why upgrade? Uh, we have a great uh, SPFX framework. It's about uh, eight years old and uh, yeah, it needs about uh, 20 release, it's a lot, and each version brings a lot of new feature. And we also have performance and security updates, so it's important to integrate this security and performance fix in, in, the, in the code. It is also uh, better to upgrade because uh, so you have uh, easier maintenance, so you can keep your component uh, uh, up to date and reduce the technical depth. And it's also better for compatibility with third party library like the PNP library, which we use extensively, and also with other PNP, uh, with other uh, NPM package. Uh, so the, uh, it's important to don't let uh, change pile up. Uh, in our company, for example, we, we have integrated this, uh, uh, we, we do an uh, annual upgrade uh, of all our, our SPFX solution. So you may adopt this one, this, this, uh, this pattern, or do it maybe uh, every two years, but uh, that's, a good, uh, that's a good point because we, we just uh, catch one or two, two SPFX release uh, with this one. So now let's talk about uh, upgrade tooling. Basically, uh, so it's a great CLI and you can use it and it generate a report. I've just written here the, the command. So you, you get a markdown report with this, which you can follow. And there is also the SPFX toolkit. Uh, it's just two clicks and then you, you can follow the instruction. I will show this later in the demo. And uh, do not attempt to, de to do it by yourself. I've seen this uh, with some of our uh, uh, people. Uh, you can try it, but the, the report from the Microsoft 365 CLI is really great. And then you can use this to, uh, to start your upgrade. So the report is, uh, sorry, is two uh, equal part. And uh, which are a little bit different. The first one is uh, the finding with a step-by-step -step instruction for the NPM upgrades and all the settings in the files which uh, needs to, to be changed. And the second one is summarize instruction with uh, all the NPM package upgrade in one or two uh, different uh, command line and also all the settings uh, which uh, need to be changed. So what is uh, better, summary uh, versus finding? Well, uh, the findings is working step by step through every NPM package. So uh, it's maybe a bit slower at first, but uh, you, you will know exactly where it fails if you have a problem. And the summary is the way to go when uh, you upgrade maybe one or two SPFX version. And uh, you may get problem to understand uh, where it got stuck because NPM doesn't do a rollback. So we'll need uh, to compare the package JSON for the non-upgraded version in, on the, in order to understand where it did stop. So for both, the file change are the same. 
and uh, both approach can fail. So what should you should you do next or what do we do next? I just call this uh, switch to manual mode. So basically you just go in the package JSON and you do uh, the upgrade manually. So you write uh, for every package which you had uh, update or delete directly in the package JSON. And at the end, you run the NPM install. So you can avoid uh, so compatibility problem between uh, package which are rela related to uh, them to other packages. Um, our tricks first, uh, the SPFX upgrade does not provide recommendation for PNP or other package. So when we perform upgrade, we also do a PNP upgrade and we also upgrade other package if uh, we we have problem with old release or if we we have security uh, fix which need to be uh, to be uh, to be updated. Then we analyze the package JSON and plan what we want to upgrade. Uh, if we uh, upgrade multiple solution, we document exactly uh, what we have done based on the first few upgrade. So we can use then this process to uh, upgrade the, uh, the next uh, component. Uh, we always test our upgrade process with a few solution before applying it broadly. And we, upgrade, we document our upgrade pass for every solution. So we keep the upgrade report and at the end of the upgrade report, we just write every step which we have done manually for the specific solution. So uh, the next developer know exactly what was done in this solution. We also maintain a working copy because uh, upgrading an specific solution may change the behavior of the code. So uh, we need to understand, was it uh, because of the upgrade or was it a bug maybe, which was already in the, in the, in the code. Um, and what we always do, because we also use a pipeline, uh, we always delete the node module and the package logs JSON. We never had the problem, so just go there and do a fresh uh, npm install. So this React security web part, it's great web part. It lists uh, effective user permission on the site. You can configure it, it uh, to be uh, dynamic. So at runtime, you can change uh, what it shows, or you can just disable these functionalities and it will, uh, it will uh, show only a static view and uh, can be set up for end user admin. Should be aware that in order that it works, the user should at least have enumerate permission. So you cannot uh, show permission in a SharePoint context um, when you don't have enumerate permission uh, permission. And permission uh, as SharePoint online, it's not like on-prem. Uh, is always in the user context, so there is no uh, privilege elevation uh, in this case. So now let's go to the demo. And yeah, I think for the first one, I will show the commands uh, here. This is the uh, upgrade report generation from the Microsoft 365 CLI. So I have now uh, with this node version uh, 1824, I have already installed uh, SPFX uh, 120, 20, that is the prerequisite, and then I can generate the report. And it's fairly quick and I get this uh, MD file, I can uh, open the preview here, markdown, and I can go step by step uh, with this instruction. And if I encounter a pro problem, then I will switch to uh, the manual mode. Now the second possibility is to uh, start the SPFX extension toolkit and just upgrade project version. 
and it's really that easy. You just click on that and then it opens a preview. And I found this uh, just before. I think it's it's really great. It all, all also starts a so-called cold tool. So if you want, you go here and you can uh, go step by step with uh, every of these recommendations which are in the MD file and you can click on that and it will show you what you have to do and where you have to uh, to perform this change. So you basically are guided in the whole uh, in the whole upgrade process with this uh, great uh, little tool here and uh, you know exactly uh, maybe I can just uh, show here and uh, it shows exactly here you have to change this this um, this import uh, with uh, import from uh, fluent ui instead of uh, office ui fabric react and that's uh, that's really a, a great a great a little tool now i will show uh, the React security web part, I've just pushed uh, some change. So I have to go serve it and Hugo will then uh, push this to main. So I will go here and just look here. So just load. And here it is already. So the web part comes uh, with a pretty fine set of permission. I'm here on my dev tenant. You may recognize our colleagues, Adele, Diego, and so on, Lynn Roberts, and myself, of course. Uh, and it lists all the objects which are uh, on this uh, site and what kind of permission do I have? So I can uh, just say I just want, for example, uh, to see uh, the people uh, which have a, a view permission. And then uh, I see here that Clean Robbins uh, doesn't have view permission, for example, on the document. Uh, I can show that uh, after why it is like that. So now um, I will add a permission. For example, I want to know who have enumerate permission on this site. So I can go here and I have predefined uh, permission here, which I can uh, grab. So I take the enumerate permission and say uh, permission viewer. And I will take a wonderful color here and then select an icon and a viewer as always i've missed it i'm searching for the glass yeah yeah here yeah. great so then i can save this one and i have the now it shows me who have the possibility to view permission on this site and the web part uh, runs really cor uh, correctly because if I go here, I've added Lynn Robbins. She has full control on the site, so she has overall uh, uh, permission. But on this specific uh, uh, document library, uh, I have uh, broken the inheritance and she doesn't have uh, uh, direct permission. So because she had full control, she could grant uh, herself permission, but at this point she doesn't have uh, permission for that. So then I will just show um, you can disable uh, some uh, functionality on this web part. So for example, I can say that uh, I don't want that the user can uh, change the permission at runtime. So I can uh, disable this one. I also say the user should not be able to select user. And here I can also say, I don't want user to be able to select lists. And so this would be a setup where the user just common on the list and don't have the possibility to change uh, anything other than uh, edit or uh, view. 
uh, or just a uh, uh, juicy spot. So, so that's it. I'm ready with my demo. Thank you for your attention and until next time. Thank you.